Okay, you're saying, they're all saying, they've eaten this grass and plenty of it. There's still loads to eat, but I'm gonna move them on. I'd say there's some up the laneway. They've been in the shed. That's the wisteria from the gardens coming down. Are you coming? Come on, Crystal. Yeah, how are you? You good little bit. Hey, Crystal. How are you, Crystal? Are you worried? When I pick you up, I'll pick you up. Oh, you gotta go down for me to pick you up. There we go. There's Crystal. Hey, girl. How are you? Loads of grass still to eat, but I'm gonna bring them back up to the orchard, which they'll love, because there's gonna be a lot more apples down for them. Look at them, already in the laneway. They've done a good chew of the laneway. Very relaxed sheep. That's rude. You're to stop coughing, because you're not sick. Okay, no sign of fly strike. Everybody's looking fine. They're ready to go back in. Okay, this is difficult. I've got you in my hand. You are going to have to go through the gate and over there. Okay. Oh, no. <laughs> okay, I've opened the gate. Now, <laughs> here, you can come through the gate. Come here. Come on. <laughs> come on. <laughs> this yeah wants to go. Okay, wait, 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 wait. Good boy. Come here. Come on. Come here. Come on. You have to come through the gate. Yes, and then I can pick you up. There we go. The complications of having a puppy. Okay. Whoa. Oh, everybody wants to go out at the same time. Oh, and there's a log in the way. There we go. Brindle, come back. You can now go down again. There we go. And they've all got their heads down to munch the apples. Yeah. Been slowly strimming the nettles. So the nettles are gonna be dry and they will have delicious eating. But at the moment, they're just interested in the nettles. Uh, apples, the windfall yeah. apples. The hazelnuts, look. This is the latest we've had hazelnuts because the gray squirrel population is decreasing because we have the pine martens. And look, normally the gray squirrels would have eaten all these green. So I might have some hazelnuts this year to eat. I mean, obviously most will be left for the uh, red squirrels. But it's great that the gray squirrel population which is an invasive species, is being killed off by both the buzzards and the pine martens, probably foxes as well. But that allows for the hazelnuts to mature and feed. Oh, look, oh, they came off in my hand. That means those are ripe. <gasps> ripe hazelnuts, yay. Oh, and you're finding the one that fell. 
Here it is. And look, ripe hazelnuts. Look at that. That's fantastic. I can have some hazelnuts finally. After years of not getting hazelnuts because of the gray squirrels eating them when they're unripe. Yay! Cool. Homegrown hazelnuts, nothing like it. Anyway, they're enjoying the apples. They're grazing, and because I discovered we have hazelnuts that have matured to ripeness, I decided to look for evidence. And here you can see that the nuts are being eaten. They're being chiseled in half and eaten. And here's some ripe ones, some more ripe ones. And there's a ripe one. So I can now plant hazelnuts again, or cob nuts, or whatever you want to call them, and start growing hazelnut trees again. I haven't been able to do it for years because the gray squirrels would eat these before they were ripe. So this is fantastic news for the biodiversity here on the farm. Whoops! I can uh, pick a lot of these up and sow them so that I can have hazelnuts growing in the hedgerows again. Yay! Good bit of news. Well, I think I'll grow some in pots first, get them a certain height, because I don't want our rabbits love eating baby hazelnut trees. So I'll probably pot some of these up and um, grow them on to a certain height and then put them out uh, when the rabbits won't necessarily chew them to death or eat them. So that's um, great news. Yay! Hazelnuts! Planting time! Still up here in the orchard picking up hazelnuts to plant and she's picking them up and eating them. She literally, here look, she flavors if they're ripe and now she's crunching it open. There we go. And she's eating the hazelnut. <laughs> <laughs> You're eating the fruits of the fields. <laughs> the other thing I wanted to show you is um, these are, see these holes? One there, one there, one here, and then one here. These are badgers. That's evidence of badgers being here. Kind of digging there. I'm not sure if those are badger latrines because they badgers make toilets. And so you have badger latrines or if they're grubbing up some sort of insect because they're all right here under the hazelnut trees. I'm sure the badger are, eat hazelnuts. They probably crunch them just like she did. So look, she's found another one. So there's no more of those holes dug anywhere else except right in there in four locations. So that could be a badger toilet area where they, they dig a hole and do their business, but they leave it open so they can go and do their business again. And it could be marking their territory and saying, these hazel trees are ours and don't come and eat them to other badgers. But um, I'm sure that there's... Uh, Lots of wildlife enjoying the hazelnuts. Thank goodness the gray squirrels are gone. I don't know if the sheep eat the hazelnuts. I know they eat horse chestnuts. The sheep might eat hazelnuts as well. I don't know, but I've got a good bunch that I'm now gonna put in a bucket and plant and hope they sprout so that I can plant more hazelnut trees around the farm. I haven't been able to do that for years because of the gray squirrels decimating the crop before they're even ripe. Look. I think she's eating hazelnuts. Are you eating hazelnuts? You're eating a strum bit of nettle, but are you also eating hazelnuts? She's snuffling around like a dog looking for truffles. Oh no, she's eating the um, ash tree leaves. That's an ash tree leaf. Oh, she doesn't want that one. She likes them when they're a certain aspect of dryness, which is kind of interesting. She's eating that one, but she left that one, which is greener. 
It's always interesting watching to see what your animals are eating. Uh, it might be what they're looking for in a diet. Here she's eating a lot more of the really, really dried up, almost hay-like ash tree leaves. This is a big ash tree right here. Oop, and that just landed on my head and fell off. So that, but it's interesting that you have three different, you have different aspects and she's eating the ones that are more like that than this. This is a fresh green. So there might be a more intensive food flavor or mineral that she needs in the dried out ash versus the um, more green ash. Isn't that right, little bit? Are you educating us? Yes, you're educating us, aren't you? You're a good girl. Okay, now to plant some hazelnuts. Yay! Thank you, Pine Martins, Buzzards, for getting rid of the gray squirrels so that I can now harvest hazelnuts and plant on the next generation. There we go, look. A few years ago, I wouldn't be able to do that. They'd all have been on the floor eating. Look at those, beautiful. Fresh and ready to plant. Hazelnut trees. Do you like hazelnuts? No, you're not interested in hazelnuts. You're interested in horse chest. Oh, maybe you are. No. You've dropped them on the ground though. Not interested in hazelnuts. Oh, that's an empty one. Okay. See you ladies later. Look at that. We supposedly, the bit of rain we had this morning, supposedly had desert sand from the Saharan desert in it. So we had a drop of rain. There's a swirl of wind coming all the way up from Africa. So we're quite warm at the moment. Come on, pup. Atta girl. Good girl. Ugh, this is difficult to do with a handful of hazelnuts. There we go. There's my hazelnuts. I've got a lot more that I'm going to be planting there. Well, the sun's come out. I've divided my cob nuts, hazelnuts, whatever you want to call them up. Those are all the good ones. And then these are the bad ones. And some of them have very minor blemishes and some of them have those holes in them. So I don't want those to go into um, my bucket. So here's the bucket. And I'm basically just going to be putting a certain amount of this in, um, breaking it up a little bit and taking the weeds out. And it's just basically to get it to put those a basic small bit of soil in the bottom and then just covering it up so that um, they can germinate in this and it prevents the um, rats and mice from getting in here if they have the steep sides. So once they germinate in the bottom of this, I'm taking weedy roots out and stuff like that. Once they, these are some roots and stuff like that. But once they germinate in here, so that, that's a good, you can see that's, what is that? Two inches, three inches. So once these germinate, I then take them out into, uh, and pop them up into slightly bigger pots. And that makes it so that, because once they germinate, the rats and the mice won't want them so much. Uh, but the rabbits will. So it's just spreading them out in here and letting them do their own thing as if they'd fallen on the ground. But then I will cover them 
so that hopefully will dissipate the smell, the aroma of um, potentially of uh, ah, that piece of glass. I thought I'd cut myself. Yikes, put that there. You just never know, golly, piece of glass. Okay, I squeezed it, breaking it up. Okay, now, cob nuts have all disappeared. Bring it over here. Dip it in the water. And hopefully this will now settle. Then bring it over here. And hopefully that will slowly, so it's now watered. And I'll just leave it up here for a while. Makes it a little bit difficult for um, a rat or a mouse to get it when it's up here. And hopefully something will germinate. There we go. And these, I throw those out. So that... That's, I do that with acorns, I do it with rowans, I do it with um, spindle, um, you know, oaks, all my seed trees. I start off in these buckets to prevent the rats and the mice from eating what I have in here. The other way is, I suppose, no, if I hung it on the wall, a rat can climb the wall. So the best thing is to maybe keep it here so that no rat can get up here. Anyway, what are you doing over there? What you hunting for? What you hunting for? So, everything's happening. This is a wonderful shady location if the sun isn't there, but the sun is there and it's not shady, is it? You good girl. Okay, that job is done.